విద్యా విధానంలో డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ దేశంలోనే మొట్టమొదటి సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం దాదాపు రెండున్నర దశాబ్దాలుగా దూర విద్యా విధానం ద్వారా కంప్యూటర్ కోర్సును అనుసంధానం చేస్తూ బీఏ బీకాం బీఎస్సీ డిగ్రీ కోర్సులను అందిస్తోంది పోస్ట్ గ్రాడ్యుయేషన్ స్థాయి డిగ్రీ డిప్లొమా స్థాయి కోర్సులను ఔత్సాహికులైన విద్యార్థులకు అందిస్తోంది డెవలప్మెంట్ స్టడీస్లో సెంటర్ ఫర్ ఎకనామిక్స్ అండ్ సోషల్ స్టడీస్ ద్వారా ఎంఫిల్ పిహెచ్డితో పాటు విశ్వవిద్యాలయమే స్వయంగా దూర విద్యా విధాన అంశంపైన పిహెచ్డి వంటి పరిశోధన కోర్సులు ప్రవేశపెట్టింది రాష్ట్ర వ్యాప్తంగా సుమారు నాలుగున్నర లక్షల మంది విద్యార్థులు ఈ విశ్వవిద్యాలయం నుంచి ఉన్నత విద్యావకాశాలు పొందుతున్నారు డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం స్థానికంగా స్వయం బోధన పద్ధతిలో ముద్రణ రూపంలో రూపొందించిన కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ అందిస్తోంది కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ అధ్యయనానికి సహకరించే విధంగా రేడియో టెలివిజన్ పాఠ్యాంశాల ఆధారంగా కార్యక్రమాలు ప్రసారం చేస్తోంది అధ్యయన కేంద్రాల ద్వారా ఏర్పాటు చేసే సలహా సంసర్గ తరగతులు సైన్స్ ప్రాక్టికల్ సౌకర్యాలు విద్యార్థులకు స్వయం అధ్యయనానికి ఒక చక్కటి అవకాశం ఇవి విద్యార్థి సమీపంలో ఉండే అధ్యయన కేంద్రం నుంచే పొందొచ్చు welcome viewers today's discussion is on the topic income from house property it is from the subject income tax of the bcom final year program of dr b r ambedkar open university incomes earned by the ssc are taxable under different heads of income the second head of income is income from house property any rent the ssc receives by way of letting out the house property is taxable under this head the provisions of which are contained from sections 23 to section 27 of the income tax act participating in the discussion today with us are professor sudhakar hello dean faculty of commerce dr b r ambedkar open university shri mala reddy garu assistant professor hello. department of commerce dr b r ambedkar open university at any time during the discussion should you have any questions or require further clarifications please call us on the following telephone numbers 040-2703-1431-2703-1432-2703-1433 a specific request from our side is to keep your questions limited to the topic of discussion that is income from house property professor sudhakar what type of income is basically charged under this head yeah before uh, we launch into the discussion on the subject chosen for the day i that it necessary to have uh, a fair uh, idea as to what uh, exactly or the different kinds of heads under which the total income is put to tax under the provisions of the income tax act 1961 the income received by the ssc's would be categorized uh, under uh, five heads namely the salaries which is the first head followed by the second head which we have chosen for discussion uh, today that's income from house property third one is uh, profits or gains from business the fourth one is capital gains the last one which is supposed to be the residuary head which is income from other sources now residuary in the sense uh, that uh, anything which is not specifically to be grouped under uh, um, uh, the four heads 1 2 3 4 namely the salaries house property business or profession or capital gains has to be taxed if at all it is to be taxed it's to be taxed only under head called uh, income from other sources which is a residuary head, which is all inclusive in fact anything that doesn't find a place there under 1 2 3 4 has to necessarily find a place here and um, coming to the house property thing which we are supposed to be discussing for another 60 minutes. 
While the scope of uh, the income from house property is clearly mentioned under Section 22 of the Income Tax Act 1961, the computational part is taken care of by uh, Sections 23 to 27, as you just mentioned. Now, the Income Tax Act has clearly mentioned certain uh, conditions for um, any income to be grouped under uh, any particular head for tax purposes. Hence, uh, income from house property cannot have a kind of exception as far as the conditions to be fulfilled for any particular income to be grouped under uh, this particular head is concerned. Now, very interesting aspect uh, is um, the conditions. Uh, condition number one goes to uh, say that uh, the property should uh, consist of any buildings or uh, land pertinent there too. That's condition number one. I'll explain what it's later. Number two, the SSC must be the owner of such property. Number three, the property should not have been used by the SSC for any business or profession carried on by him. The second condition within that, a supplementary condition built into the third condition is the profits or gains from such business must be chargeable to tax under the Income Tax Act. Now, coming to the first one probably for gaining a bit of clarity as um, the property should consist of uh, any buildings or lands are pertinent there too. Now, buildings as such, the dictionary meaning is uh, uh, a permanent uh, kind of a structure which is a box, box kind of a structure which is covered by four walls and used for any purpose, that would be for residential or non-residential purposes. Now, the catch here is a more important expression in the first condition is lands are pertinent there too. What do you mean by this? Now, the dictionary meaning of lands are pertinent there too is uh, any accessories attached to an activity. Now, buildings have to have certain uh, accessories. For example, a residential building has to have certain conditions, maybe usually has. Something like a backyard or a courtyard or a kitchen garden or uh, maybe a parking space, maybe a compound wall, maybe a gardener, I mean garden, sorry. So these are the appurtenants attached to a particular building. In the case of a non-residential building, you do have certain things like approach roads or connecting roads or maybe a compound wall, maybe a kind of a car garage, whatever. Now, uh, this expression becomes really important in the context of uh, the rental value. We will be discussing in due course of time that what exactly is put to tax under the Income Tax Act is not just the rental value, but something more than that. It has got a wider scope, which includes several other things, which are beyond uh, generally a common man's knowledge. Now the point here is, um, once you say this is something which is put to tax, there may be a case where it is not lands um, appurtenant there to or to be taken into consideration, but they are to be excluded from the expression as far as taxation, the Income Tax uh, Act for this particular head income from house property is concerned. There could be a case where uh, appurtenants are giving rise to certain amount of income independently which is uh, away from the mainland activity called letting of the building or a property, whatever it is. For example, there is uh, a portable water spring that has been struck on a piece of land, which definitely becomes an appurtenant to a building, but this can be separated from the uh, building as an activity or giving rise to a certain amount of income, or it doesn't really affect the earning capacity of a building. Okay. So if it could give you certain amount of income, which is in a commercial sense an income, it should be treated to tax under income from other sources, not from house property. House property. Number two is the SSC should be the owner. It's a very, very important thing. Ownership is the determining factor in so far as putting an income under this particular head to tax is concerned. There could be a case, uh, for example, I take a building on rent from X for about 4,000 rupees. I sublet it to uh, Y, maybe you for uh, maybe 5,000 a month. Now, uh, if this 5,000 rupees income which is received by me as a receiver of the rent, should it be put to tax under the head income from house property in my hands is a question. The question is a state no, mm -hmm. because I'm subletting it. Ownership doesn't really come into play at all. But as far as uh, me becoming a tenant of uh, another person who is the owner of the thing is concerned, in his hands it will be put to tax under the income from house property only not from any resource. For me, it becomes income from other sources. Third question is uh, the property should not be used for business or profession carried on by the SSC. The income from which is chargeable to tax. Okay. That's another condition. Now, the point here is uh, very interesting. Uh, the I, I request all the students and the viewers to uh, note one important point. 
this is probably the only head where the notional income is put to tax, not the actual income. We'll be able to differentiate between uh, the notional income and uh, the actual rental income later, maybe in the due course of uh, uh, point here. I mean, uh, that's how it is to be put to tax, and this is what the scope of uh, income from most property is country. Okay. Uh, Mr. Malaridi, Professor Sudhakar was talking about, uh, or rather he was stressing about ownership. Now, he says that it is the owner who is liable to pay tax. Now, one thing comes to my mind. If, for example, there is a person who has got income from house property, uh -huh. but then he does not want to show this as his income, so he transfers the house property onto the name of his wife, and in that situation, the wife becomes the owner. Now, right. what kind of uh, remedy does the Act have for this kind of thing? Yeah, um, Rabindranath, as Professor uh, Sudhakar said, assessee must be the owner of the house property for the purpose of charging income under the under the head income from house property. Correct. So, in order to avoid uh, tax any person, any individual, um, for the purpose of avoiding tax, he may transfer the house property to his spouse or his uh, children. In such a case, there are provisions available in the act to avoid such situations of avoiding the tax by the SSEs. Uh, section 27 of the Income Tax Act. Uh, 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 under this particular uh, section 27, in such situations, certain persons can be deemed to be deemed owners of the property. Okay. So they, they need not what you call uh, the legal owners. The the title of uh, the ownership may not lie with the the particular person, legal owner. But uh, as as you said, uh, for example, uh, any person, uh, if he transfers his uh, house property uh, to his uh, wife, let me say. The purpose is very clear. The objective is to avoid the tax, because his wife may not be taxpayer, or if at all, if she is taxpayer, she may be paying tax at lesser rate. Yeah. Maybe in the what you call lower slab of the uh, income tax this thing. So in such a situation, if the property is transferred without adequate uh, uh, what is consideration, consideration, then the transfer of the house property, that is, if he is husband husband will be deemed to be the owner of the house property and uh, whatever uh, what you call uh, the annual value of the house property is uh, det determined that must be taxed in the hands of the husband. In the same manner, uh, a parent may transfer his uh, what you call uh, house property to his uh, uh, minor child and in such a situation also, uh, even though the, uh, the, the parent may be father or may be mother, even though he is not the legal owner and uh, whatever income that arises from that particular house will be taxed in the hands of the property that is the transfer of the house property. Okay. These are the two situations you know which are clearly mentioned under section 27 of uh, the Income Tax Act. There are certain other situations also where we, uh, we have to what you call uh, treat certain persons as deemed owners. For example, uh, the holder of uh, importable assets where you know the property is not divided. And uh, the family property may be what you call uh, in the name of the eldest son of the uh, family. family. And actually, he is only the what you call uh, um, holding the property, trustee. but uh, yeah, he, he acts as trustee of the property on behalf of all the uh, his younger brothers. And uh, actually, all the brothers must benefit from that particular uh, property. True. In such situations, the holder of the that is the in this in this example, the eldest uh, what you call. Uh, uh, son in the family will be treated as the uh, owner. deemed owner okay. and also uh, in certain situations you know uh, we will be familiar with such situations uh, a member of the cooperative housing society uh, maybe a member of um, uh, association of um, um, persons, persons where the cooperative society let me say tra uh, allots you know the uh, house property residential units to the to its members and uh, the exactly, only allotment will be over and the title will be transferred on the payment of lost installment. Right. And in such a situation, even though the allottee, the member of the society, is not the uh, legal uh -huh. owner, he will be treated as uh, what you know, deemed owner of the property and uh, whatever income that comes from that property will be taxed in the hands of the society member. 
and uh, uh, in, another, uh, in, in another situation, uh, uh, a, a person may, uh, may have the possession of the property. For example, uh, if any person uh, what you call enters into an agreement for the, pur for the purpose of uh, uh, purchasing the uh, residential house and the agreement will be there and uh, ad uh, the total amount might have been paid by that particular buyer and based on that the owner of the uh, but the original owner of the I mean seller of the property may give the possession to the what you call uh, the uh, buyer but ultimately the the sale deed might have not been executed okay. even then even then since the buyer is what you call enjoying the property and whatever income that comes from that pro property whole property will be uh, taxed in the hands of the that particular person only the buyer only but he, but he has not become legal owner so mm -hmm. far even then that uh, what you call the, the income will be taxed in the hands of that person in another example uh, sometimes you know uh, the house property may be taken on uh, what you call lease lease okay rent and by virtue of you know the lease which may be for a period of not less than 12 years and uh, if the lessee, I mean the person who has taken on the lien, he will get, uh, he will acquire or he will get some sort of what you call a right in the house property. And uh, that is the reason why, you know, uh, whenever, you know, we let uh, house property, the, uh, uh, what you call the agreement, uh, the rental agreement will be only for 11 months. It will not be for more than 11 months. And if it is, if it is more than uh, 12 months and uh, it is, uh, if it is renewable and uh, renewal basis, if it is continuously, uh, what you call, uh, renewed, uh, for a period of not less than uh, 12 uh, years, in such a case, you know, the lessee will get some, uh, what you call, acquired um, right in the property in such situations where, you know, by virtue of the lease period, which is not less than 12 years, in such a case, the lessee will uh, get the, what you call, uh, acquire the right and that particular lessee will be uh, treated as deemed owner and in his hands only the income from house property will be taxed. So, these are the different situations, you know, when uh, even though the, the, the persons are not legal owners, are treated as deemed owners uh, under this act <coughs> and they are put to income tax under the, in, under the head income from house property. Oh, Professor uh, Sudhakar, Malaradi sir has given a very extensive list of uh, cases where the house property will be, the income from house property will be taxed in the hands of the deemed owner. Now, I would like to ask you, are there cases where the property income is not taxed? In fact, there are. There, uh -huh. are. Um, there may be a number of instances where uh, the house property is not put to tax for, of course, uh, in respect to the income yielded by such properties. Uh, the most important ones could be, uh, case one could be income from any farmhouse forming a part of an agricultural land okay. because agricultural land or agricultural income as such is exempt from tax. So anything that forms a part of the agricultural land, of course called a farmhouse, these days we find lots of people owning farmhouses uh, and the land being used for agricultural purposes where they grow lots of things including flowers and things like that. Number two, annual value of any one palace, underline the thing one there, annual value of any one palace found in the occupation of an ex-ruler okay. is exempt from tax. Number two, three. Not more than one palace. Only one. Okay. If he has more than five, six, uh, I mean, we can't help it, sorry. Income from uh, house property to a local authority is uh, not to be taxed under the head income from house property. Next thing is a property income uh, to an approved uh, institution or approved uh, scientific research institution is not put to tax at all under the head income from house property. The next thing is it is uh, uh, property income to a university or a hospital or any other educational institution approved for, of course, uh, under the provisions of the Income Tax Act 1961 cannot be put to tax under this head. Then uh, the property income of uh, any institution which has come into existence only for the development of the Kali and village industries okay. is also exempt from tax. You said anything which is exempt from tax. Next thing is uh, many property income in the hands of registered trade unions, a very important point. Like uh, any income yielded by any property which is held by a registered trade union, underline the word registered there. If it is not registered, it is not to be exempt from tax. The next thing is uh, house property held for 
charitable purposes by any institution or uh, any organization is not to be attracting any amount of tax in respect of such income under the head income from house property. The next thing is uh, property income of political party, a very important thing. Like property income of any political party will not attract any amount of tax liability in respect of the same under the head income from house property. Very important thing as I um, mentioned in my uh, answer to your first question like any house property or any property or building used for uh, carrying on the SEC's own business or profession is not to be taxed under the head income from house property. Naturally, it implies that any house property which is used for running of the SEC's own profession or business will not be put to tax under this head income from house property. Then finally, at least as far as the list is concerned, because we've got a long list, maybe another five, six points. But one self-occupied house property, any SEC, for example, an individual SEC owns more than one house property, but still only one will be treated as self-occupied, others will be put to tax. Underline that one only. Out of so many you have, maybe you have uh, in your occupation as an SEC, half a dozen properties, but still you will not be exempt in respect of all such properties, but you will be definitely exempt from payment of tax only in respect of one unit, one um, building. Okay. okay. This is uh, something which is to be exempt from tax as far as income from house properties concerned as for the provisions of Income Tax Act 1961. Uh, Mr. Malaridi, we have been talking about up till now what are the incomes which are taxable and all. Right. The very, <coughs> very important and most pertinent question, how to compute income from house property? Mm, okay. Um, as we have already discussed, annual value is the basis for charging income under the under the head income from house property. It is not the uh, rent value of the house, that is the actual uh, rent sued from the house. Maybe most of the people, you know, they think that uh, the total rent, whatever they issue, uh, receive, will be put to tax maybe with that intention, uh, many people may not be coming forward. True. Uh, yeah, uh, Good. For, for, for the purpose of what you call uh, showing uh, income from house property in their uh, income tax uh, returns or maybe to their employer. But, uh, uh, Actually, it's not. Uh, the uh, house property, the basis is, as I, as I told you, annual value. Then, uh, what is annual value? Yeah. The annual value is the amount for which the house property might reasonably be expected to be let out from year to year. Can you repeat that again, sir? The, the amount or sum yeah. for which the house property is Reasonable, reasonably be expected to be let out from year to year. From year to year. Okay. The expected rent is uh, important here. Mm. Not so the actual rent. Not, not the actual uh, rent. Uh, and uh, then how to determine and uh, how to determine this particular uh, annual value? The main, the crux is uh, the what you determination of uh, uh, annual, annual value, value in the total computation of income from house property. Yeah. The students are, uh, as you said, uh, really it is pertinent to the students because. Um, if they know how to what you call determine the annual value, then uh, I can say 80 percent of the problem will be solved. Solved okay. the examination. So now, uh, this and this particular annual value uh, is to be what you call uh, determined, you know, uh, in a manner which is mentioned in the Income Tax Act. Okay. And there are different uh, uh, values of the property will be there, and uh, uh, all all these values must be taken into account for the purpose of uh, determining the annual value. The values like you know most of the people also will be know, um, will be may be aware of uh, these values. Uh, municipal uh, rental value, the value fixed by the municipality, local body, concerned uh, local, body, local body for the purpose of levying property tax. This is one. Second thing is F, uh, fair rental value. We call it as uh, FRV. The fair rental value uh, is the value which the similar property, similar house property can fetch in the same locality or similar locality. So, these two values. And uh, in the first step, as I told you, the annual value has to be what determined step by step. In the first step, what we have to do is, this um, uh, municipal rental value and the second one is uh, fair rental value. These two figures must be compared. And the uh, higher of these two is to be selected. Okay? Then after select selecting the higher of these two, that figure must be compared with one more value that is standard rent. 
if the prop house property uh, under question is subject to the uh, what you call uh, uh, rent control act the rent control act fixes the standard rent and uh, nobody can what you call uh, uh, show more rent than the standard rent okay. so in such a case you know as i told you the higher of the municipal rental value uh, municipal rental value and fair rental value must be compared with the standard rent so this value will be subject to the limitation of standard rent okay so uh, uh, the whichever is less you know will be taken as the uh, uh, erv expected rental value for example let me say municipal rental value is 90000 of the house then uh, fair rental value is 1 lakh okay 1 lakh and the standard uh, rent which is fixed by the rent control act is 1 lakh 10000 then when we compare the first two values uh, 1 lakh the fair rental value fair rental value will be the higher higher of then that rate. will be compared with the standard rent standard standard rent is 1 lakh 10000 then the expected rental value of the property would be 1 lakh because that, that is lower yeah that is lower okay and uh, for example let me say the instead of 1 lakh 10000 the standard rent is of, uh, what do you call fixed as 80000 only okay then in such a situation the expected rental value will not be 1 lakh it will be restricted to only 80000 which is standard rent so this is the expected rental value so this uh, and uh, finally to get the what you call uh, the gross annual value gross annual value this uh, expected rental value must be compared with actual rent or the rent uh, receivable from the house property and uh, then these two must be compared and uh, ir of these two must be taken as the gross annual value okay for example let me say the house property is let out uh, you know for uh, 10000 per month the annual rental value would be the actual rental value would be uh, 1 lakh 20000 in such a case in such a case the uh, the uh, b- uh, what do you call that uh, uh, expected rental value is 1 lakh actual rental value is 1 lakh 20000 yeah then <coughs> the gross annual value which is uh, the basis for the purpose of uh, charging income under the head income from house property would be 1 lakh 20000 this uh, is the gross rental value mr malaredi right. this seems to be a very very interesting uh, okay. explanation that you are giving okay. but uh, i'm sorry we have to take a break for uh, the news now we'll uh, come back after the news break welcome back after the news for those of you who have just joined us and also for those of you who were already there with us i would just like to tell you all what professor malaredi was telling us he was talking about how to compute the gross annual value step 1 select the higher of municipal rental value and a fair rental value step 2 compare this with standard rental value and select whichever is lower step 3 compare the amount selected in step 2 with actual rental value the higher of these two is the gross annual value now talking about all these values we will ask professor sudhakar what exactly are these values that we are talking about yeah as you rightly put it like uh, right in the first in the first step in uh, computation or determination of annual value itself is uh, municipal rent valuation mrv municipal authorities uh, conduct surveys for determining the earning capacity of the house properties for the purpose of levying taxes local taxes this is uh, conducted periodically to determine the valuation and uh, based on that they levy certain amount of uh, tax maybe 10% 5% 20% whatever the second most important thing as malaredi has already mentioned is uh, fair rental value okay. the, the quote here is fair uh, the amount of uh, rent uh, uh, that could have been fetched by a property in a similar locality in similar conditions is called a fair rental value now what is fair i mean there is nothing like uh, two things being always alike but still it is only uh, taken as uh, evidence of uh, the earning capacity of the house property though it is not uh, finally 
the only determining factor. The third factor is uh, standard rental value, which is fixed by the standard, uh, I mean, this is called a Rent Control Act, which determines the standard rent of uh, the house property for tax purposes. In no case should the ERV should exceed the kind of thing like uh, the standard rent. Now, it clearly mentioned that uh, no owner should uh, be allowed to tax or, I mean, collect anything more than this from the occupier of the house. Right. Nor should there be a case where the occupier of the house uh, is paying a little more than what is actually prescribed under this particular thing. And the final thing is uh, actual rental value, actual rent received or receivable. This is uh, something which is going to determine uh, lots of things. And as a final step, which we compare uh, the fair rental value with uh, the actual rent, then we try to get at the, the gross annual value. This is what the values represent, and uh, they are. The, this is the reason why they are actually considered important. Uh, Mr. Malaridi, Professor Sudhakar was uh, telling us that it is a notional basis on which uh, the rent is uh, taxable. Right. Now. Assume a situation where there is a tenant, the tenant is not making the payment of rent. He okay. has made a default. He right. does not pay the rent. Then should the owner still pay the tax on the house no, property? No, no, no. So in the case of uh, uh, such a situation, we call it as unrealized rent. Okay. The rent is not what you call uh, realized by the owner. Maybe the tenant uh, refuses to pay. Maybe many reasons uh, there. And in such a situation, what we have to do is, for the purpose of what you call uh, giving the benefit of unrealized rent, for the purpose of uh, determining the annual value, what we have to do is, if certain conditions are uh, fulfilled, mm. so unrealized, unrealized rent can be deducted from the rent received or rent receivable. Again, that is for the purpose of determining the annual value. Annual value. And uh, what are those, uh, what you call uh, the conditions? There are four conditions. The first one is, the uh, tenancy must be uh, bona fide. The second thing, the defaulting uh, uh, tenant who has not paid the uh, rent uh, must uh, must be vacated. Uh, uh, must have vacated the house. Uh, Mr. Malaridi, can I interrupt you? We we have got a phone line coming in. Okay. Hello. 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 Uh, good afternoon, sir. You are not clear in your uh, question, sir. Can you please repeat the question? No, no, no. In the case, the people are taking the rent without any receipt. Okay, there is no receipt you are saying. Okay. So then, suppose the people are receiving a last period, then what is the support to the tenant to give the last some time to get the thing? Any source is there? Okay. Any ground is there? Yeah, we will ask the experts here. Uh, the caller was uh, trying to ask a question, saying that suppose uh, the tenant does not give the receipt or the owner is not giving the receipt to the tenant for payment of rent. What should be the treatment be? Probably in that situation, uh, wh what I feel is uh, if the owner himself is refusing to give the receipt to the tenant, what should the tenant do is the question. We will ask Professor Sudhakar. Yeah, the question is um, getting a receipt from the uh, house owner by the tenant depends on the kind of conditionalities that uh, form a part of the agreement. Malaridi was very, very clear in his explanation uh, maybe about a couple of minutes ago that uh, if the agreement stands good for 12 consecutive years, you are into some kind of a trouble. So you enter into an agreement for uh, issuing of a receipt and that is on a continuous basis for 12 years, you are in for a trouble. and. Um, Tenancy is bona fide. Bona fide right. uh, can be interpreted as something which is entered into with malafide intentions too. Malafide intention with the purpose of avoiding tax liability in respect of the house property. You don't want to get into the tax books at all. Okay. Now, where is the question of issuing a receipt? 
So the best thing I can do is probably you can have an agreement uh, drafted right in the uh, beginning of the uh, term, I mean commencement of the tenancy itself. Okay. So we will uh, come back to Mr. Malaredi. He was talking about underlying rent. Yeah, uh, rent. As, uh, as I said, the first condition was uh, tenancy, tenancy has must to be, be bona fide, and uh, the second one is the defaulting tenant must be compelled to vacate the house, or steps might have been taken to uh, vacate him, and the third one is. Uh, all the what you call uh, the uh, legal proceedings must be uh, initiated. What you call initiated by the owner to recover the unrealized rent. And to that extent, he has to satisfy the uh, assessing officer also. If he has not uh, initiated any legal proceedings, he must prove that such uh, uh, what you call uh, proceedings will, will not be useful or will not be proved. They are useless. Uh, yeah, then. Then the fourth one is the same tenant should not be occupying any other house property of the Owner. Owner, okay. If these four conditions are fulfilled, the unrealized rent will be deducted from the actual rent received or to be received. And uh, that particular uh, 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 value will be compared with the expected rental value. Okay. For example, uh, in the earlier example, we are the, if the expected rental value is 1 lakh, the actual rental value is uh, 1 lakh 20,000. If the tenant has defaulted for one month, per month 10,000 rupees at the rate of 10,000 rupees. Uh, from 1,20,000 we will deduct uh, 10,000 and uh, the actual rental value will come to 1,10,000. Then uh, between these two expected rental value and the actual rental value the higher of these two will be taken as the uh, uh, gross rental value. In this case 1,10,000 not 1,20,000 will be the gross rental value. Very so, good this good is the basis for, uh, for computing income under the head house property. Where there is unrealized rent. Unrealized rent. Very good sir. Uh, Professor Sudhakar, probably this the students may have to draw a statement and show the computation of income from house property. Can you please tell us that statement? Yeah, I try to put myself in the position of a student and try to understand this. Um, all along we have been talking about the annual value becoming the most decisive factor in, um, in determining the quantum of tax that is to be paid in respect of the income from house property. The first and the foremost uh, step is to arrive at uh, or determine the gross annual value which we have already been discussing. I think the okay. students are very clear. Let me not confuse them any further. Yeah. Now take uh, gross annual value as a starting point, some amount whatever is the thing and then allow the municipal taxes or the local taxes paid by the owner of the house property, that is SEC, to be deducted from this particular gross annual value. You get uh, a figure which is called net annual value, NAV. GAV, after being subject to municipal taxes or local taxes, will result in net annual value. Now, there are uh, two other uh, sums which are uh, allowable under section 24 under the head deductions, under the caption rather, under the uh, point. Like uh, these are to be allowed to be deducted from the net annual value as arrived at, as we have just discussed. The first and the foremost uh, deduction, which is uh, under section 24A, uh, A. is statutory deduction. Please remember the expression statutory itself should be able to explain everything for you. Statutory in the sense that you don't have to do anything to get this deduction. Without any effort on the part of the SEC, he gets entitled for this particular deduction which is allowed as a percentage, which is 30 percent of the net annual value. Uh, Professor Sudhakar, yes. sorry to interrupt you. We have got a caller coming in. Hello. Uh, hello. 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 Uh, hello, sir. I am Murthy. Chepan. I am Murthy. Chepan. Sir, I am Murthy. Chepan. I am Murthy. Chepan. I am Murthy. Chepan. I am Murthy. Chepan. I am Murthy. Okay, and? So, thank you. Chepan. Okay, and uh -huh. Oh, okay, and uh, the caller uh, was uh, asking that he has purchased a house property by taking a loan, and uh, in that particular house property, his mother and father reside. Right, right. They do not pay any rent to the SSC, but the SSC is living in a separate house by paying rent for that house. Okay. So, what should be the treatment be? 
ఆ ఇంటి మీద యాక్చువల్గా నా ట్యాక్స్ కట్టాల్సిన అవసరం ఉండదండి ఎందుకంటే ఆ ఇంటిని మీరు రెంట్కి ఇవ్వలేదు కాబట్టి మీరేం పొందట్లేదు మీ పేరెంట్స్ మాత్రమే ఉంటున్నారు దాంట్లో సో సిన్స్ యూఆర్ నాట్ గెటింగ్ ఎనీ అదర్ బెనిఫిట్ అంటే సింప్లీ యువర్ పేరెంట్స్ ఆర్ ఆక్యుపైయింగ్ అండ్ యూ కెన్ ట్రీట్ దట్ హౌస్ యాజ్ సెల్ఫ్ ఆక్యుపైడ్ అండ్ యూ నీడ్ నాట్ పే ఎనీ ట్యాక్స్ ఆన్ ది యాన్యువల్ వాల్యూ ఆఫ్ దట్ అదర్ పర్టికులర్ హౌస్ సిన్స్ బై వర్చ్యూ ఆఫ్ యువర్ వాడి కాల్ యువర్ ఎంప్లాయ్మెంట్ సమ్వేర్ మేబీ you are staying somewhere in rented house and there you can what you call uh, that thing you know uh, it will be um, uh, avail that uh, hr benefit HR also if he is employed okay so this is about that then the loan that he has taken probably he can yeah. uh, claim deduction under section uh, 24b yeah yeah you can claim deduction also and uh, maybe we may go to that afterwards okay. and in the case of self occupied house uh, the uh, interest on loan taken if taken after వన్ ఫోర్ నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీ నైన్ అప్ టు వన్ ల్యాక్ ఫిఫ్టీ థౌజండ్ యూ కెన్ క్లెయిమ్ యాజ్ నెగటివ్ ఇన్కమ్ ఓకే అండ్ దట్ కెన్ బీ వాట్ యూ కాల్ అడ్జస్టెడ్ విత్ ఇన్కమ్ ఆఫ్ ఎనీ అదర్ హౌస్ ఆర్ విత్ ది ఇన్కమ్ ఆఫ్ అండర్ ఎనీ అదర్ హెడ్ ఇన్ ది సేమ్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఇయర్ ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ ప్రొఫెసర్ దగ్గర విల్ కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు ది స్టేట్మెంట్ సారీ టు డిస్టర్బ్ యూ దట్ ఫైన్ లైక్ Uh, under 24A, we have one deduction which is uh, allowed as a percentage of uh, the net annual value. To be very specific, it is allowed at the rate of 30% of the net annual value of the host property. Number two, the other deduction which is discussed or allowed under the same section, of course, under subsection B, 24B, is in respect of the interest on loan taken for purchasing construction of the host property. Malaradi was mentioning some rates in 1.5 lakhs. if it is taken in after such and such a date and so on so these are the deductions and a uh, very interesting thing is there is nothing like a restriction on uh, the deduction under section 24 so there may be a case where uh, he was mentioning that uh, it could lead to a negative income or whatever so i think it's all uh, like the deduction mr malaredi can you please uh, throw more light on this statement sir but uh, for the benefit of the students uh, uh, the first of all you know the annual value is to be determined step by step right. and uh, you know uh, we have already seen how gross rental uh, gross annual value gav is to be determined and uh, that gav is to be what you call uh, 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 compared with actual rental value higher of these two will be the gross annual value and uh, from that particular, particular gross annual value municipal taxes will be deducted that will be net annual value okay and uh, from net annual value uh, deductions under section 24 are to be deducted and uh, after that there are only two deductions under section 24 and uh, after that we will get net income under the uh, under that particular house, house property and uh, you know uh, 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 and there may be more than one house may be there uh, an ssc may be owning four five houses and uh, under each house in the same way we have to det- determine the annual value and uh, by the by the uh, net uh, income and uh, uh, all the incomes put together will be the income that is put to tax under the head income from house property so each uh, each house is treated as a source of income under that particular head so like that total income is to be computed and this is the case with the uh, computation of uh, income from let out house property okay and uh, for the benefit of students uh, as you have asked and in the examination for example you know mrv and uh, frv only mrv is given frv is not given okay then uh, only that particular uh, what do you call uh, mrv will be taken into account and the standard rent may not be given then uh, the only the figure which is given that mrv must be taken as the expected rental value and that expected rental value will be compared with the uh, actual uh, rent received or receivable so like that you know depending on the uh, situations which are given in the examination um they have to what you call solve the problems okay so these values would be given to us in the examinations the yeah, mrv yeah. frv and all yeah. if they are not given then probably those values should not no, whatever be. is given from that only from they have to, you have to solve the problems compute the gav right. uh, professor sudhakar deduction under section 24b sir deduction under t- uh, section 24b is given for what purpose and what is the amount that is given yeah but so uh, there are two things here uh, one is for uh, the construction there are cases where uh, when like it's not cases the reality is there could be a case uh, the ssc has purchased a plot of land for which he has taken a loan even that is allowable though the uh, property was constructed without taking a loan okay okay that's one instance number two is uh, any amount of money uh, borrowed from any source on which some amount of interest is payable is allowed to be deducted under uh, i mean this particular head provided the house was i mean the loan was taken either for construction purchase 
reconstruction, all kinds of things which are associated with the house property. Now the limit here is uh, if it uh, was uh, a case where the loan was taken uh, for the assessment year 2001 and 2. And yeah, it is uh, 30,000 if it is before that. It's after that it is 1,50,000 which are al allowed as a deduction. So this is the amount of deduction which is allowed. There is one another case. There could be an interest uh, which is payable by the SSC on a pre-construction loan. Okay. There could be a case where you have taken a loan but uh, the house, I mean construction was not completed. Now this, uh, the, the from the date of borrowing till the year in which the house was, uh, I mean, completed. completed. This is called a pre-construction uh, period loan, which will be allowed as deduction right. under the same section, right, in five equal installments from the previous year or assessment year for, for the first time during which the income from house properties put to tax. So this is something about interest and loan. Uh, Mr. Malaradi, th uh, there was one specific call that we received okay. and in that call you happened to mention about a self-occupied house. Sir. Right, right, right. Uh, what is the self-occupied house and what is the treatment right, under uh, the act? Uh, so far we have discussed about the competition of income from let out house property only. Okay. So far we have not touched the competition part of the self-occupied house. Okay. So in the case of uh, uh, assessees may keep um, uh, one house for their own uh, what you call uh, residence purpose, occupancy purpose. And uh, in such cases, uh, the net annual value simply will be taken as nil. There will not be any annual value uh, in the case of uh, the house which is kept as self-occupied. And uh, sometimes uh, if the SSC keeps more than one house for self-occupied uh, self purpose, then the option will be given to the SSC. The uh, SSC uh, if he opts for any house as self-occupied, only for that house, the annual debt annual value will be taken as mm. nil. And uh, 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 if any house is kept for what you call uh, uh, for his uh, uh, self-occupied uh, purpose, and uh, if he is not uh, because of his employment or profession or business in other place, if he is not occupied that, in that case also as we have already mentioned, the net annual value will be taken as nil. Okay. And from this, this net annual value, in case of self-occupied house, there is only one deduction to be allowed, that is under section 24. That is, uh, that is on account of interest on capital borrowed. If the interest on capital borrowed for the purpose of construction, for the purpose of acquiring the house property. And uh, if that particular uh, loan is taken after 1-4, 1999 the deduction will be allowed to the extent of 150000 and if it if if the loan was taken before that particular cut off date then the deduction will be only to the extent of 30000 30, and again and if this loan is taken for the purpose of repairs renewals renovation of the house reconstruction of the house even after 149999 even after the loan is taken after 149999 the amount of deduction to be allowed under section 24 is only 30,000. So like this uh, under the self-occupied house net annual value will be taken as nil from which only one deduction on account of interest on uh, borrowed capital will be allowed because of which there will be loss under the uh, what you call uh, uh, loss from self-occupied self house and this loss can be adjusted with uh, the income of any other house or with the income under the any other head in the case of most of the employees and uh, one house you know generally employees will have one house and that is uh, shown as self-occupied and that uh, that house might be constructed by taking loan and uh, in such case you know the employees are allowed to show what you call uh, allowed to um, uh, show negative income under house property and that will be adjusted from your income from salary so like that uh, you will be what you call uh, reducing your tax burden also this is about the competition of income from self-occupied house. So the we were uh, discussing about uh, competition of income from house property. We have seen when a house property is given on rent, what is the treatment? And when the house property is self-occupied, what is the treatment? Just to sum up, we start the statement with the words gross annual value. To calculate the gross annual value, you have to do this in the working notes. In the working notes, the first working note is compute the gross annual value which is higher of MRV, FRV and compare this with standard rent, select whichever is lower. Compare the selected figure 
with the actual rental value. Out of these two, whichever is higher is GAV. Get this GAV into the statement. Put the GAV in the outer column. Deduct local taxes paid. You get the net annual value. From the net annual value, allow only two deductions that is 24A and 24B. What you get is income from house property. We do hope that this was very useful to the students. Thank you very much. Thank you.